Hey guys, so this is the lesson on counting and permutations, the first lesson in our unit on probability. Before we actually do probability, we have to learn how to count. So there are different methods of counting. Uh, our objective is given an understanding of what it is to count. Students will analyze the counting principle and permutations to count the number of outcomes in different situations. So let's analyze the counting principle first. In class, we warmed up, or we did a do now, with two dice. We looked at two dice and said, how many outcomes can we get from one dice? Uh, we came up with a conclusion of six. There's six sides to a dice, so we can either get a one, two, three, four, five, or a six. And we said, great. Uh, given that we had two dices, how many dice, how many outcomes did we have for one die with six? And what about the other one? Well, we said that's six. When you guys built the chart, we had 36 different combinations or 36 different outcomes. So this counting principle allows us to figure out how many outcomes are in each event. <clears throat> we see up here for two events let me get the pen out real quick there we go for two events um, by definition if one event can occur n ways and the other event can occur n ways then the number of ways that both can occur are just m times n so we think about our two dice we had dice one occurred six different ways dice two occurred six different ways and the number of total outcomes was just 6 times 6 which gave us 36 different outcomes so if we were to conclude or we would extend this to three events then we would just multiply all three events so again if I talked about the dice it would be 6 for the first dice times 6 for the second dice times 6 for the third dice if we were to multiply that out um, I don't know that off the top of my head but it is 216 so you have 216 different outcomes for three dice for three dice uh, so that's the counting principle pretty much to sum it up we just count I mean I'm sorry we just multiply the different ways an, uh, an event can occur so an example of this <clears throat> we look at example two it says use the fundamental counting principle you are framing a picture the frames are available in 12 different styles. So I'm going to go ahead and underline what is important to me. So we have 12 different styles. Each style is available in 55 different colors. Uh, you also want a blue map board, which is available in 11 shades of blue. How many different ways can you frame the picture? So if we kind of summarize that or draw a picture of it, here is my frames. I have 12 different styles for frames. So this is going to be my stripe frame. Uh, we also have 55 different colors. And the last thing we notice is we want a blue mat. We have 11 different shades of blue. <clears throat> so what is it that we're going to do with all three of numbers? Well, according to our counting principle, we're just going to multiply these different ways of building a frame. So if we multiply, we get 12 times 55 times 11 so it's 12 times 55 times 11 to obtain 7260 7260 different ways or combinations I'm sorry different ways uh, that we can frame a picture that we can frame a picture in example three, we're going to again use the counting principle in two different examples. We have that a standard configuration for Texas license plates is one letter. So here's my letter, followed by two digits. Here's my two digits, followed by three letters. Uh, for A, it says how many different ways, or I'm sorry, how many different license plates are possible if letters and digits can be repeated? So how many, the first question we got to ask ourselves, how many letters are in the alphabet? If I'm going to pick a, a um, letter here, how many letters do I have to choose from? Well, I have 26 letters in the alphabet to choose from. How many digits do I have? Well, I have 10 digits if you count 0. 1 through 9 is 9, plus 0 is going to be 10 digits. So I have 10 digits. And if I can repeat them, I can use those 10, pick from those 10 digits again, or I can pick from the 26 letters in the alphabet, or the other 26 letters in the alphabet, and another 26 letters in the alphabet. If I were to again use the counting principle, then I know that I'm going to multiply all these three, all these uh, six different numbers or six different ways of obtaining those digits. So we get 26 
times 10 times 10 times 26 times 26 times 26 and we get well four mm, I want to say million I'm sorry 45 million so let me go ahead and erase that oops there we go we get 45 million uh, 697,600 different ways uh, or different license plates. We can build different license plates. Now, if we look at B, it says how many different license plates are possible if letters and digits cannot be repeated? So I can't use the same one. So if we start with 26 letters in the alphabet, um, my, next, my next letter, I can't, repeat the, I can't repeat the same letter twice. So let's go ahead and take a look at our digit. We have 10 digits to pick from. So let's say I pick the digit 5. Well, how many digits are left? I'm going to end up with 9. If I chose A for my first letter, how many letters are left? Now I have 25. Then I have 24. Now I have 23 letters to choose from. So as we go through each one of these slots, we're pulling out one of our options. If we use an A, we don't have an A anymore. We have 20, 25 uh, letters left. We pull out a B, we have 24 letters, we pull out a C, we have 23, and so on. So we multiply this, we get 26 times 10 times 9 times 25 times 24 times 23. And that gives us a total of, I want to say, 32,292,000 different uh, digits that we can, I'm sorry, uh, different possibilities for license plates. That's what these numbers stand for. So you can see there's more license plates available if we're allowed to repeat these numbers. So again, that was the counting principle. Let's move on. So to properly define permutation, a permutation is an ordered combination. It is an ordering of n objects, r objects at a time. So we're going to be talking about repeti when repetition is allowed. So here we have repetition is allowed against, I'm sorry, when repetition is not allowed against when repetition is allowed. So the way to think about when it's not allowed, in class I talked about if we would have a race of 10 of us, let's say I would win first place, you would win second place, and your neighbor would win third place. Um, there's no way that I can be first place and second place. I'm not allowed to repeat two positions. I'm allowed to either be first place or second place or last place, but I'm not allowed to be both. So that's when permutation, or I'm sorry, that's when um, we're not allowed to repeat. Now, if we look at repetition, if we think about in repetition, a lot of our iPads have that digital lock. So I think about combinations of locks. So you're allowed to repeat the combination 3333. Three, three, three. You're allowed to repeat the same number more than once. So that number 3 can actually be used uh, three other times or two other times. So that's when it's not allowed versus when it is allowed. <clears throat> so with per permutation without replacement. Um, so what if a license plate only had four slots? So again, we know that our California license plate actually has uh, seven slots. But what if it only has four slots and we can only use A, B, C, and D? How many permutations would we obtain? So on the first slot, uh, how many numbers or how many letters do we have to choose from? We have four. If I use the A, how many are left? Three. If I use B, how many are left? Two. If I use C, how many are left? One. So what are we going to do with all these numbers? We're going to multiply them. The counting principle tells us multiply. What we actually end up having is four times three times two times one. This is also known as a four factorial. Factorial numbers are you're just multiplying in descending order from the starting number all the way down. So my biggest number here is 4. I'm going to multiply 4, 3, 2, 1. So to gain a little bit of practice of what a factorial is, I asked you guys in class to kind of write these out. So real quick, I'm going to run through them. Again, you guys have this in your class notes. We have 4, 3, 2, 1. We have 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 
we have 3 factorial is equal to 3 times 2 times 1, and 0 factorial, we'll actually look at that in a second. So here we go. So I'm going to pause this video real quick, and then um, just so I can bring my, my calculator app, so I can show you guys how to use this on your uh, TI-83 or TI-84s. Give me a second. All right, guys. Um, so here we have our calculator app. So this is uh, what your TI-84 looks like. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to do a 3 or a 4 factorial. So for the first one, we had a 4 factorial. We want to go ahead and calculate that. So the way we do it is we punch in our 4. We go to math. We scroll to the right. And then we scroll to the option 4. Option 4 is this little exclamation mark. That is our factorial. We click on that. And there is our answer. So for the first answer we have is 24. So I'm going to go ahead and write that in. We have 24. Now let's take a look at what 8 factorial gives us. So again, we kind of repeat what we had before. We can always just go second and enter. And it allows us to modify our previous um, function or whatever we put in. So here we have 8 factorial. That gives us 40,320. So for this one, we have... 40,320, oops, 20. There we go. <clears throat> Let's do 3 factorial. 3, again, if you want to see it in full, we go all the way down to probability. We scroll down to 4 and enter. And enter one more time, we get 6. We have a 6 factorial. Now let's take a look at what 0 factorial gives us. So second. Now we're going to scroll to the left and change that to 0. We get 1. So a lot of you guys thought it was actually going to give us 0, but in reality it gives us 1. Now let's take a quick uh, second to analyze why we would get 1. So if we look back at our previous slide, we notice that we're looking for combinations. I'm sorry, we're looking for different um, ordered combinations would be the correct terms for permutations. It's ordered combinations. So 4 factorial would be the, order, the amount of ordered combinations in a license plate. So we have 4 factorial. So if we look back to our slide, we're going to ask ourselves, um, for 4 factorial, we get 24 different ordered combinations. 8 factorial gives us 40,320 ordered combinations. Uh, 3 factorial gives us 6 ordered combinations. And well, if you think about the set of 0 of an empty set, how many different ways can you reorder an empty set? There's only one way, and that's to keep it empty. So 0 factorial is indeed going to be 1. Keep that in mind. That is very, very important to understand that. So let's move on. <clears throat> there we go. So what if we could use all 26 letters without replacement? How many permutations would we obtain? So again, permutations are ordered pairs. I'm sorry, ordered uh, combinations. So just I just wanted you guys to set this one up in class. We ended up with 26, 25, 24, 23. Uh, the question I asked you guys was, is this the same as 26 factorial? So is this the same as 26 factorial? Uh, the answer is no. 26 factorial will go all the way down to 1. This stops at 23. So I just wanted you guys to set that up. Now let's look at permutations without replacement. This is the actual formula that we're using, NPR where n is going to be the number of objects we start off with, and r is what we're grouping them at a time. So if we look at our previous example, we have 26 letters and we're grouping them four at a time. So the way I would write this would be 26 letters. I'm grouping them or permuting them uh, four at a time. So you can either enter it like this. We say our 26 factorial over 26 minus 4 factorial and you guys learn that operation on your calculator you can do it that way or uh, you can actually use the option for permutations we go to math so let me just teach you both ways so we can compare and contrast 
So we noticed that it was 26 factorial. <clears throat> Girl down to four. 26 factorial divided by, I'm going to get in the habit of using these parentheses, uh, 26 minus 4 would be 22 factorial. There's my factorial. I'm going to close my parentheses and I end up with uh, 358,800. Now let's compare with the easier method that I'm allowing you guys to use. We go to math, we go to probability, and there's NPR as our second option. We go to NPR. Well, how many objects do we have to choose from? We have 26. How many times, or how are we grouping them at a time? Four at a time. We should get the exact same answer. There it is. So this method is actually quite uh, a little bit faster. So we get 358,800. So 358,800 would be our answer. <clears throat> so now uh, the last um, the last formula I want to go over is permutations with replacement when you're allowed to replace something. So SK. So again, we have our NPR up here. So we have n objects. We're grouping and permuting them r at a time. Uh, all this means is that the number of things that we are repeating. So S sub K are repeated objects. So we have multiple repeated objects. We're just going to multiply it by its factorial. So this looks a little iffy, but let's jump into the next example. We learned best from examples, and that's what I want to teach you. So let's jump into our first example is Miami. Um, it's saying find the number of distinguishable permutations of the letters in Miami. So first thing we want to learn here is we have to set up our function. So the way I taught you guys is um, how many uh, positions or slots do we have on top? Well, we said five. Uh, or how many letters are in Miami? We said five letters in Miami. We're grouping them five at a time. Five at a time. Uh, in the bottom, what is repeating? Is M repeating? Yes, it is. How many times? Two. So yeah, we have two factorial because it's repeating twice. Now we're going to go ahead and multiply that by any other thing that repeats. So does the I repeat? Absolutely. How many times? Two. So again, that's going to be by two factorial. So then we're just going to simplify this out. Well, anytime we have five P5, that is actually the same as five factorial. So what we can actually do is just count the letters on top that we want to um, that we're working with when we were with, with with replacement. We have five of these letters, and we're just going to set that to five factorial over again the repeating two factorial times two factorial. And if we remember what two factorial is, it's just <clears throat> two factorial is just equal to two times one. So really, it's just two. So if we work this out, we're going to get five factorial of two times two, or 5 factorial over 4. If you want to use your calculator, you can, or you can just finish solving it uh, by hand. Either way works well with me. Uh, you're allowed to use your calculators on quizzes and exams uh, for this unit. So let's take a look at how we input that. So we're going to go back to math. We go to probability. We're going to go to our fourth option. We're dividing that by 4. And our answer is 30. So we should get a total of 30 <clears throat> distinguishable permutations for the word Miami or the letters in Miami. So to kind of just make that, uh, to see that as a second example, B is going to be a little bit quicker. How many letters do we have in Tallahassee? Tallahassee. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 11 factorial on top. Does the T repeat? Nope. Does the A repeat? Yup. How many times? Three, so three factorial times is the L repeat? Absolutely. Two factorial. Does the A repeat? Absolutely. Two factorial. Uh, what else repeats? Um, so we have the the A, the L, the S, and the E repeats. So we end up with this. Uh, the way you can input that in your calculator <clears throat> is just again remember that these twos just mean two times two times two because it's two factorial. But we can punch that in like so. Uh, we get 3. If we go back to math, probability, option 4, times 2 times 2 times 2. 
Uh, what does it do? There we go. So, hold on. I think I might have... Oh, 11 factorial. Okay. Yeah, that shouldn't have happened. So, let's fix that all the way to the left. It's not 5 factorial. It's 11 factorial on top. There it is. Uh, so we're just probably going to have to write the whole thing over again, uh, which is fine. More practice for us. Here's that divided by, open my parentheses, uh, 3 down 4 factorial times 2 times 2 and then 1 more times 2. Close parentheses. That's more like it. All right, so we actually have 831,600 would be our answer. So 831,600 distinguishable permutations. There we go. Oops. Uh, let's go back. Oh, you guys get there. There it is. All right. <clears throat> so that's it, guys. That's all we're working on with. Um, uh, the counting principle and permutations. So again, class, I had you guys take a little group quiz, but we're good here and finish your study guide. Um, so that wraps it up. I'll begin the next lesson and post it up as well so you guys can keep track. I hope they help. Bye.